you, as I told you, this wise person told me years ago to watch out for a conflict. This is when it was not even even thought about. And I, I believe he told me this like late, who oh, it was a long time, decades ago. He was saying that, listen, there will, when, as China rises, because they're going to rise, uh, he said, the United States will feel threatened. He said, and they'll, they will try to make war with China in Asia. And that when they finally do, China will be on par with them militarily. And the Chinese, and these are his, will beat the brakes off of them. This is what he said. He said, and the Chinese will, because they have something that they're fighting for, not for hegemony, for territorial integrity and on principles. And he said that, and this is long before they had the quad or anything else. He was telling me about that uh, Britain would take part and and Australia, and, and he said that China is going to roll over Australia as if it was a parking lot. That And that's what he, and he said, and as the Asian nations see America getting beat, they're gonna remember all the stuff that she did to them and, and then they're gonna uh, put their lot in with China and they're gonna run America out of, the, of, of Asia's politics. And this is what was told to me years ago. So when I'm watching this stuff, I'm, um, I'm thinking back on the things that were told to me. So I'm seeing a little a little clearer than a lot of other people um, that, that watch these things. And I don't think that they see the inherent racism in the policy against China by the United States and the West. Um, they, they had no problem with Germany rising economically at the time, but and, and they had no no problem with China rising so long as they control that rise. Um, and China was just a manufacturer and they would uh, recycle the money in U.S. treasuries and stuff. When China got to be independent and started um, learning the crafts and the trades of what uh, the United States had, it became a problem. Just as if it came, became a problem with Japan when the Japanese, most people don't realize this, that in the 80s, the Japanese economy almost supplanted the United States economy and the Japanese are considered, quote unquote, U.S. allies and the United States sabotaged their, their economy to remain number one. But this time they have a power like China that is not in the Western um, pockets. They're not um, um, compliant with Western dictates and they see this as the greatest threat to the Anglo um, Western architecture of the world. What, what say you on that matter? I mean, the Asian nation don't even have to go back to the ancient history. They're just gonna be defending their own self-interest because mm -hmm. if you look at all these uh, chicken hawks, the armchair generals talking about war with China, the first thing they say, oh, we're gonna choke, we're gonna choke off the Strait of Malacca. So the China won't get its oil from Middle East and its grain shipment. But what they're, they're not thinking is you're not, when you block off the Strait of Malacca, you're not just blocking off the traffic to China. You're blocking the traffic to the entire world. You know, all the, all the nations in the region, even Japan and South Korea, they're also depending on Strait of Malacca for their fuel and their food. And all the Southeast nations, Asian nations, Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, everyone depends on the Strait of Malacca for trade. You are blocking off the livelihood of everyone. I mean, I can't think of a quicker way of turning everyone against you. you know, and, that, <laughs> I, 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 and I said that on a tweet. I'm, saying, I, 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 I'm pretty sure there are quicker ways of ending the U.S. American empire, but I just can't think of any. I mean, like the moment you're trying to block off the Strait of Malacca, you are turning the whole world against you because you are trying to plunge the world economy into the shitters. And, mm -hmm. and, 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 and for what? <laughs> and for what? And, and, and so this is why you, you, if you want to get all the Asian nations lined behind China, yeah, you go ahead and block the street. <laughs> <of Malacca. laughs> you, know, you know, Carl, um, on that, as we're talking about it, I, I was just thinking, because I bring this point up, all the time what sense does it make even if you feel threatened by china if 93 to 95 percent of all of your goods come from china and china holds over a trillion dollars in your bonds how insane is that to try to sanction china and try to wage war against a person that is financing your government and also um accepting your 
your worthless dollars for goods because that's all you're doing. You're paying for it with worthless dollars and China is shipping the goods to the United States. When war breaks out, China is just going to embargo the United States. That will bring the economy to a screeching halt. I think this is why uh, in that same Tucker Carlson interview, uh, he said, he said, oh, he's he trying to explain why United States is tackling Ukraine and, and, and Middle East instead of tackling China. He said, well, it's kind of like you're trying to pro procrastinating, putting off on the harder problem. You, know, you, 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 you just try to do something to occupy your mind. What's well, because you know, China is a harder problem. They can't, they, they don't have any easy way to contain China's rise. The, clearly the, the threats to the United States and the US, our interests, global trade routes, energy, pure like military power, relative, uh, relative military power comes from China, of course. And so to the extent that you are focused on another region given the size of our military, our attention span, the limits of our budget, you are detracting from that. And so the question is, is it worth it? And being American, we're not trained to think that way. We imagine everything is a possibility. The world's a menu of endless possibilities. We can do all of it. But the truth is we can't never have been able to. There are limits of you know, physics and money and, and reality that impose on you. And so of course, I wish Latvia the best. I would feel sad if Latvia ever lost its autonomy, to the extent it actually has autonomy as a NATO member, but whatever. I would say to myself, you know, that's sad, is it? But is intervening, given the realistic possibilities of doing what we want to do, worth it, given that that would detract from the real problems, which are East, not Eastern Europe, but Far East? So uh, that's how I would think about it. I think that's a pretty moderate, sensible, realistic way to think about anything. I don't think that's radical. I certainly don't think it's taking Putin's side. I have no, I have no special interest in any of this. I only care about my country. Well, it's interesting you mentioned China because I, I mean, there's been a lot of talk in foreign policy circles about the Pacific pivot over the last 20 years in America and how mm -hmm. America's strategic focus now has to move to the Pacific rather than to Europe the Middle East uh, and Eastern Europe. Uh, and of course, the Pacific pivot does actually challenge China. I mean, it does challenge China's ambition. So it does presumably suit China for America to be focused on uh, the Ukraine uh, because it means they care a little bit less about what China's doing in, say, the South China Sea or something like that. Needless to say. So, and you could you know, look, I'm not alleging any conspiracy here. I do think there is a feature of human nature that causes, and I think it's innate, that causes people when confronted with an unsolvable problem to turn to something else to occupy their minds. And anyone who's been, I mean, this is relevant to your viewers who are journalists, anyone who's ever been on deadline for, say, a magazine piece will find himself sorely tempted to rearrange his books by author because it's, it's another problem to work on as you ignore the problem that confronts you that you actually can't solve. China is a problem that is very hard for the United States to solve. And it's not clear how we do solve that problem. And by problem, I mean, you know, sort of giving hegemony of, over the world to a country that doesn't believe anything really that we believe. It would be a massive change in the way the world operates, in the way that we in the United States live, in the way that you and Great Britain live. I mean, having China in charge of the world would be very different from what we have now. That's a huge concern, a legitimate concern, I think. Um, and we're not meaningfully dealing with it. And I think, you know, part of, you often hear people on the right say, well, that's because they're all taking money from China. Well, yes, that's true. Our former Secretary of State, Madeleine Albright, who's like a moron, by the way, but got rich, as so many have been. But, you know, got rich effectively making China's case to the American business community. Many others in our diplomatic corps have done the same. So that's a, that's a straight up sellout. Hollywood sells out. The NBA sells out. They're controlled by the Chinese government. Everyone knows that. But I think the deeper problem has nothing to do with commerce. It just has to do with the terrifying nature of this threat and our own fear that we can't actually do anything about it. You know, because... You if you try to hurt China, you are hurting yourself. You're 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 mm -hmm. you're cutting off your own arms and legs. So this is a problem they're all struggling with right now. All the Western elite they they try different ways. Now they try to instead of say decoupling, they say de-risking. Okay, we just have to 
isolate on some small key sectors like semiconductors. We're gonna we're we're gonna uh, we're gonna cut them off. But the effect, as we see, is is exactly opposite. That lead to the Chinese indigenization yep. of the semiconductor technology. China spent like something like four hundred fifty billion dollars on importing chips every year. Uh, guess what? What if China don't have to spend four hundred fifty billion dollars mm -hmm. importing chips? That mm -hmm. money that can be all used to devote to the develop research and development inside China to build up China's own semiconductor chip industry. You know, before China spent more money importing chips than, than importing oil. You know, imagine that when China finally produced cutting edge semiconductors on its own, all these Western company will permanently lose their market access to China because then they have nothing to offer. And, and this is a lot of the Western tech company knows this and they're, they're screaming at Washington say like, you guys don't know what you're doing. And the Washington elite are still doing it anyway, because the, 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 the people who work inside the Bellway bubble are so cut off the, from, ab, from like everyday reality of American life. They're cut off from, man, they don't know anything about manufacturing because well, <laughs> the manufacturing is gone from the United States. They, they don't have any firsthand experience on manufacturing. They don't know how every how everything works. And 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 they they are right now a lot of the policy mistake by United States self-inflicted, including like all these sanctions against Russia, against China. And now they're talking about uh they're they're talking they're, they're now they're tr trying to force sale TikTok again. They're trying to force mm -hmm. uh ByteDance, the parent company of TikTok to sell uh, TikTok to American owned company. I mean, it, China is not going to allow that. And, and they're, they're trying to pose this as a, a China bad thing. Uh, I just saw a reporter who said, Oh, I talked to the, to the, uh, TikTok people, uh, in China. They all say that the, the, if they agree to American demands, you know, their top executive is going to be disappeared by the Chinese government. So, so they're making it like a China bad when it's the United States is trying to rob, trying to literally steal and rob a Chinese company uh, of their intellectual prop. I mean, they, they, what they really want is the algorithm uh, because the TikTok algorithm, that's a, the true value. They want that to be owned by the Americans. And, yeah. and it, it, again, this is like 100% projection because in the news you read about Chinese stealing intellectual properties of, of, of U.S. company. Here they're try, attempting an outright robbery <laughs> by, by law passed by Congress. They're trying to, trying to take over a, a Chinese company. So start with TikTok, because I think we're all trying to understand what's happening here, whether it should be banned, divested, or otherwise. And if it is divested, who may be a potential buyer? Well, you know, when I was Treasury Secretary, I chaired CFIUS, and CFIUS uh, approved, and I had President Trump sign an order that TikTok had to be sold. And I continue to believe that. So I, I think the legislation should pass, and I, I think it should be sold. I understand the technology. It's a great business, and I'm going to put together a group to buy TikTok. You're trying to buy TikTok. I, I am, because this should be owned by a U.S. U.S. businesses, there's no way that the Chinese would ever let a U.S. company own something like this in China. You said, have you already put a group together? No, I'm, I'm, I'm working You're on exploring it. exploring a group. I, I've spoken to a bunch of people, but... Who, the, would, be, who would be part of your group? I, I can't tell that to you now, but we, uh, it, it would, be, it would be a combination of investors, mm -hmm. so there would be no one investor that controlled this. Me, and the, the issue is all about the technology. This needs to be controlled by U.S. Let me business. ask you a very practical um yeah i mean it, i don't i don't think they have good uh i don't think they have any good um solutions at this point to contain the rise of china that's why they're they're doing this crazy things like sending green berets to Kinmen islands like what the hell are the like few dozen green berets gonna do on the Kinmen <laughs> islands i mean like you, you think they're going to be able to stop an uh, amphibious landing of the People's Liberation Army when the time comes? Of course not. I mean, it's, this is just try to, they're trying, it's a provoc act of provocation, mm -hmm. right? Because right after the Green Berets showed up on Cayman Islands and 
the Taiwan Coast Guard, they rammed a couple of mainland Chinese uh, fishermen vessels, and that caused the death of two uh, Chinese fishermen. And, and so the immediate consequence of that is China now sent their own Coast Guard to patrol Kinmen Island's waters, all around Kinmen Island. And, and guess what? The, the, Chinese, the, the, the Chinese, mainland Chinese Coast Guard ship is much, much bigger than the Taiwan Coast Guard. So China's Coast Guard showing force around a group of islands controlled by Taiwan within spitting distance of the mainland. Will Ripley is out front. Just off the foggy coast near Taiwan's frontline Jinmen Islands, the Chinese Coast Guard intercepts a Taiwanese tourist boat. Taiwan's Coast Guard calls it an unprecedented forced inspection. These are the waters where that incident happened, where the Chinese Coast Guard boarded the Taiwanese tourist boat and checked everyone's ID. You can see how close we are to the skyline of the Chinese city of Xiamen. There are Chinese construction boats all throughout these waters. Pretty easy to mix up which side, the Chinese side or the Taiwanese side you're on when you're this close. Cross strait tensions rising here ever since the Lunar New Year holiday. A Chinese speedboat capsized in a chase with Taiwan's Coast Guard. Similar to this one several years ago, two Chinese fishermen drowned, two others survived, telling a conflicting story. Even if we make quick turns, we won't capsize. It only capsized when it was rammed into. An infuriated Beijing accuses Taipei of covering up the fishermen's deaths. Chinese officials blame Taiwan's ruling party, reiterating Beijing's sovereign claim over Taiwan, promising to step up patrols in the area. We've been out on this boat for less than two hours, and we've already seen at least four Chinese Coast Guard boats, including that one right over there, which just made a U-turn. Our captain says that means they're monitoring us just like we're watching them. Both sides watching what happens next. So now China has effectively resumed control of the water around Kinmen Islands. So you have a bunch of green berets just sitting there on the island seeing these like huge <laughs> Chinese Coast Guard just circling around them. I mean, and and they, they, they will be able to look across the water and look at the amazing cityscape of the Chinese city of Sham in just a just, just couple of kilometers. And, and, and they can't go there. And they cannot go there. Kinmen Island is not a very developed place because Taiwan deliberately left Kinmen Island undeveloped uh, because it was to be the forefront of the war with mainland China. So, so but on the other side, on the, on the Chinese coast, Xiamen is one of the major Chinese uh, port, and it has has very beautiful um, uh, a cityscape. People can can Google it. So th that's why I'm saying, like, all these American berets, they're just basically like, going to be sitting on this small island drinking beer, looking at this amazing city across <laughs> the water that can't go. And then they see, have, see this huge Chinese Coast Guard ship just <laughs> making circle around them. That I, I mean, they are literally being sent by their government as human sacrifice <laughs> because their role is to be the tripwire. You know, the mm -hmm. idea of tripwire, if, if there's a war, there's a conflict, and if there's injury or capture of American personnel, that will allow furnish U.S. government as an excuse to get directly involved in the conflict. I mean that the, they are literally human shield. I mean the the the. Uh, so I, I remember when I first posted that news, somebody asked, "Wait, don't tell me all the Grim Berets they send over are black people." And and they posted that, that South Park cartoon. You know, I'm talking about the the Canadian bacon. Yeah. <laughs> That's a, well, you know, um, I I think it's when it comes to like TikTok. I think it's a little bit more because I believe that um, those big corporations like um, Instagram, Facebook, and all those are part of the uh, the the intelligence alphabet thing. And what they want to do is uh prevent anybody from having the same capabilities that they have. That's why they always put blame on China. Oh, they're, they're, they're spying. They're doing this. When we know that the United States has an active spy program on Facebook and all the rest, because even Zuckerberg admitted to this. And I think that they're trying to attack China on multiple levels. Think about this. Not only have they attacked the chip industry and they're attacking TikTok, they attack Huawei, and now they're attacking um 
uh, the Chinese um, electric car industry, which rivals uh, Elon Musk. And they are doing this stuff strategically to try to maintain a grip on um, the things that they once dominated. I'm going to let you have the say on that, okay? I, I, exactly. I mean, the, the Facebook, they are part of the, the, the uh, obviously, they're part of the campaign to get TikTok either banned or, or, or have a forced sale to American company because TikTok is eating lunch of, of Facebook. I mean, only old people use Facebook nowadays. I mean, that's true. That's just the truth. Uh, and, and like, and they're also eating the lunch of Instagram. I mean, like, mm -hmm. uh, especially among the youth segment. So they they have a vested interest to see either TikTok uh, fail or they themselves get a piece of TikTok. So, so that's that's why they're all there's the money that's funding the campaign in Congress. To, to actively push him for this. And, and as you say, them themselves are also part of the, the, the national NSA alphabet, right? The, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the literal, and, and one of the big push for the tech war against China is a former Google CEO, Eric Schmidt, because he had, um, he had fat Pentagon contract to use AI for future Pentagon warfare against China. So he has a very vested interest to see, uh, he was, he's the one that's pushing for the chip sanction because he wants to cripple uh, China's AI industry. Uh, this is behind the ban on NVIDIA and all that. And, and so, so right now, what, what we have in the United States is one of the problems why U.S. Uh, policy seems seem so incompetent and incoherent is because there's, unlike China, China have these like five-year plans. They have like national policy on development. U.S., we just have a bunch of different group of elite fighting for power, right? And, mm -hmm. and, and, and so, so it's impossible to form a a coherent industrial policy or national development strategy because our elite don't care about national development. Mm -hmm. Our elite don't care about the rest of the Americans. Mm -hmm. for the, the rest of Americans are just flips from whom they can extract rent. I mean, they, they are the <laughs> rent of the elite. They are, they, they, they see this average American to them are no different from, you know, country from the people of the global south they're just we're just a resource for them to do the resource extraction from <laughs> you know and and so so yeah so i mean uh th this is this is why i over long term i'm optimistic they're not going to be able to do anything to china